<laughs> we've never looked at ourselves as entertainers. Back in 1963, they called us into Cincinnati, Ohio, to one of the biggest country music labels in America. James Brown was there recording his first recording. The reason I remember it so good, they had James sort of clean what the president of the company was telling us, but it was our day to record. And they had, uh, so the reason I remember this so good, they said, Mr. Easter, we've got him clean right now. I know it's your day to record, but if you'd let him have your day and y'all record tomorrow, we sure would appreciate it because tomorrow we don't know how he'll be. So we, the reason I remember James so good, we gave him our day to record. Then when they did hear the Easter Brothers sing, they called us back in the studio of the president of the King Records Company, which was one of the biggest country music labels in America at that time. Said, I like you, Easter, the harmony, the, the brotherly harmony that you got. And if you'll sing love songs, we'll put you on top. Well, we just had got saved from three alcoholics in the prison record, and I thought we was already on the top. So I said, sir, we're already singing the greatest love song that man can say. That's not what the world wants. So we might not have what the world wants today, but we got what the world needs. Amen. We got what the world needs, folks. So keep singing and preaching it, ain't it? So this song here, where we got the idea of it, I'd call a 10 year sentence in prison when I was 16 years old. Got in trouble with the law when I was 13 years old. They done sent me off a couple of times, so they wanted to send me to a man's prison, so they kept me in jail from 15 <laughs> till I was 16 and gave me 10 years at hard labor and sent me to down around in Roanoke Rapids down in a little old play, 109 prison camp. Now, he wasn't the main fellow. He didn't hurt nobody. No, he, he, he wasn't hurt. one of these I dogs. I wanted to kill my pet dog. <laughs> tell him anyway, the biggest thing you've done. Russell said the biggest thing he seen to done me was when I'd come up to red light and it was red and wasn't green, I'd shoot it out and go under. <laughs> He just didn't want to go up and run red light because that's against the law. But folks, listen, all I done in was give somebody a job. The city had to hire somebody else to put it back in. So I, I don't know. Everything I done back in was good. But anyway, uh, the best Christmas that I ever spent to this since it's Christmas season. And I want to show you how that we're serving the now God. He's not a last week God. He's a now God. He was saying today, tomorrow, and he never changes. And... I was going, I had, you know, when you went to prison, it was hard labor back then. You weren't even allowed to put your foot on the shovel. You had to get in the sand pits and, and blow dump trucks 10 hours a day in the hot sun down in the swamp country, no shade trees. And you'd almost be having a, a sunstroke, and sometimes it'd rain and it'd give you a little break. And, and then I'd go back in, and the central prison, when they sent me from central prison to the chain gang there, they said, son, I feel sorry for you, young, 16 years old. All them old people are going to look at you like a young girl when you go in there. You better get you a weapon because they'll ruin you. Like to scare me to death. And folks, listen, I, I, there was change buses somewhere between the time I got there and back, and there was some coming home and some going in. And a buddy of mine from Mount Earth, where I lived, recognized me and let me have his knife. And so when I got there, I told the superintendent of that camp what the warden told me, that I could keep my knife to protect myself. So I was so little and young, and they let me keep my knife. So I'd stick the knife in under my pillow, and I'd go work 10 hours a day, hard labor. I'd come back, and I'd stick it under. They did try to get me. Guy tried to get me one night, a couple of nights after I was there when I was asleep on the top bunk. And he came in and he grabbed this hand, but when he did, I took the knife that was open under my pillow and I nicked his throat right here. And he knew I was going to get his throat next time. And he jerked and went back. Well, he waited another night. Then he'd come again and brought another gentleman with him about 2 o'clock in the morning. And got my, he knew which knife hand I had my knife. So the other guy sneaked and got this hand. He got that hand. And I knew I'd had it then. But you know what? Even before I had ever heard about Jesus Christ, I had never been to church before in my life. I had never heard a preacher preach. Even before I even heard about him, he knew me. Yeah. <coughs> he knew me. He knows you. A young man stood up from nowhere, and I believe today that he was an angel. His muscles, I'd never seen a man with muscles like that. Had a little t-shirt on him. I mean, he had muscles all over him. He hit one of them guys and knocked him one way. He hit another one and knocked him another way and told him, said, if you touch that boy, 
I'll roll your head out to the guards next time. And they knew he meant it. I believe God sent an angel in my way. Anyway, I was planning. I done it. It was so dreadful. You mark off the days one at a time. Every inmate had a calendar. When we spent a day in that dreadful place, we marked it off across on it. I had spent four of those marking them on. I was trusted. They four Christmases. Yes, it was that Christmas. I wasn't going to spend another Christmas. They had, they got where they trusted me. Out on the road, I was a water boy. Inside, I was a cook for all the inmates. So I was trusted. And then they let me get a little country band up, so I had got out and I had met some people playing country music around Roman Graphics, North Carolina, Wilson, North Carolina. We had a little prison band, and I met lots of people. And so I had made it up. Me and my buddy, we're not going to mark off Christmas this year. Not in this place. Two young ladies with a brand new car said they were going to pick us up Christmas Eve night. 1954, Christmas Eve night. We was not going to spend another Christmas in that place. Now to show you how that we serve a now God, nothing happened until one day before Christmas Eve. And I was there sleeping in my bunk. The superintendent come in and called me to the mess hall. I said, well, he drank a little. That's the reason he let me get up a country band. I knew he liked to drink. He probably wasn't going to cook him a meal. So I went to the mess hall at 1 o'clock in the morning that night. One night before the next night, they were going to pick us up in a brand new car, and I'd probably been on the run the rest of my life. One night before that. So I went out figuring I'd cook him a meal. He said, first he said, James said, you've been seen out around the camp drinking this week. Well, I was getting ready for my freedom. I had been drinking. Had it in my locker, and I had been drinking. Getting ready for my freedom. When we were spending Christmas, not that time. Doug had it planned, and it was going to pick us up. And then he said, no, I'm just joking, will you? He said, I'm going to have to let you go home tomorrow. And I said, you're going to what? And I, it was a chair sitting there. My knees got to knock it. And I pulled the chair up and had to sit down. I said, look up at him. I said, now you wouldn't choke about something like this, would you? He said, no, James. You made parole today. Tomorrow I'm sending you back through central prison. If you check out your health good, you're a free man. You're going home. <laughs> Folks, one day before I spent my life on the run for the rest of my life. And it happened a week before that, a week after that. He's a now God. Hey, if you ain't got a job, keep looking at it. He's a now God. If you've got a sick thing that the devil has managed to get on you, the stripes on his back was for our healing. He said it in the book of Peter's, the book of Isaiah, if you want to look it up. He bore those stripes for just like he shed his blood for your salvation. He bore, it was in the plan. The stripes were for our healing. Many times I've been so sick on that bus I couldn't get out. Them brothers would lay hands and anoint me with oil, and I'd go in and sing, out sing every one of them. He's not only a savior tonight, he's a healer. Amen. You know what? In the book of Deuteronomy, I'm going to say this when we get into the song and why we wrote the song. In the book of Deuteronomy, 28 chapter, read it. The Lord said if I'd hearken unto him. Now, folks, this is, I thank God he led me to that scripture. A year ago, he led me to this scripture. He said, if you'll hearken to me now, he's talking to me, and he's talking to you when he, in that word, in the word. He wasn't just talking to anybody. He's talking to all of us. He said, if you'll hearken to me, I'll bless you going in, and I'll bless you coming out. I'll bless your children and your children's children. I'll, I'll even overtake you with the blessing. But if you don't, he read on over. He said, if you don't hearken unto me, I'll curse you going in, and I'll curse you coming out. So there's no in-between serving God. It ain't like politics. You can't just say, well, I'm not for him, but I'm not against him either. He said, you're either for me or you're against me. There's either a curse following you around in your life and not on your life, your children. I'm, folks, this ain't opinion I'm telling you. It's the Word of God. Get book of Deuteronomy and read what I'm telling you right now. I thank God one day that I chose to take a curse not only out of my life and put a blessing in his stead, but out of my children and my children's life. That's what you do. So when I came home, some of the first scriptures that helped me write this song, I don't have to sleep with a knife in under my pillow no more. 
And I don't have to come out here and do this. I get to. I get to. And I'm proud that I get to. I don't regret a mile that the Easter Brothers and Russell, East Young's done. They could be out in country music. They're some good pickers. But they chose. They're his generation. He's blessing his kids. My children are Jeff and Sherry. They are somewhere in New York tonight. End up in Pennsylvania. You know what you're doing? Telling folks about Jesus. Amen. Telling folks. About... My oldest son, Rabbit Easter, they call him. Rusty Goodman named him Rabbit. Went with the Happy Goodmans when he was 18 years old and played with them until they died out. Went in his house not too long ago and he had uh, trophies all over his house. He was a musician here 12 times in Nashville. God's blessings on that, my family. My daughter runs my little store for her. She's saved. My great grandchildren come around my kitchen table and say, Papa, how can I go to the good place and miss the bad one? I have the privilege of leading them to Christ. My great grandchildren. Money can't buy that. Work jobs all your life and lay up retirement plans all you want to. But money can't buy that. I thank God one day that the Easter Brothers chose to come out here and do what we're doing. Would you stand with us while this, uh, this song ain't long? Because we want you to sing it with us. And, 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 that, and the reason the Lord gave me a. Uh, if you listen to the scripture, I don't have to sleep in the night in my pillow no more. I got a good place to sleep. I got shoes on my feet, clothes on my back, good roof on my head. But most of all, one day, when Jesus Christ called this old boy and dealt with my heart, he dealt to every man, boy and girl, measure of faith. And I believe that measure of faith was that one day that you call upon him and let him live in your heart. He designed your heart for him to live in. You'll never be happy. I believe he made a special place in your heart for him to live. And I don't believe you'll ever be happy to you need to come live there. And you know what? Everybody just poured in a miracle should look up and say, Thank you, Lord. Jesus, right here. He promised.